It's Wednesday, my dudes, and even if Intel wanted to unveil their upcoming 6 and 8 core Tiger Lake H CPUs later this month, some people thought it might be a bad idea to let us know more about them right now. Because of course, it's always better to get more information about a product before the official launch, right? You can get better prepared. And speaking of that, on the 11th of May, Asus will also be talking more about these chips and their laptops featuring them. So make sure you're going to tune in to this channel because I will also be live streaming their events right here with Steven from Honor Disk Zone. So if you'd like to get more information about their laptops and also hear our thoughts on them, then you're going to find it right over here. And if you need more information, I'll make sure to leave it in the video description. Now, you guys probably know that earlier this year, Intel released their four core Tiger Lake H uh, CPUs, which haven't really been up to par for 2021 standards, especially for those seeking the maximum performance. And I'm sure that by now you've also seen quite a few reviews for them. And if you haven't, then again, links in the video description for that. Now, the six core and eight core SKUs are going to start with the i5 11260H and they're going to go way up to the 11980HK, which is going to be their flagship CPUs. Um, these chips should essentially support PCIe Gen 4 and uh, more bandwidth for faster GPUs and faster NVMe drives that are perhaps going to be available in these laptops and maybe some other bells and whistles, which technically should make those laptops a little bit more competitive, especially when looking at what AMD has been able to do with their latest processors. We'll also see some boost frequencies going up to five gigahertz, albeit that is only going to be available on one core because for the eight core max turbo, you're expected to see about 4.5 gigahertz. So don't get too excited for that just yet. Yet. This time around, Intel is also going to have three 8-core CPUs and two 6-core CPUs, but according to some earlier leaks, we're expected to see an extra chip in both categories, which would add up to four 8-core processors and three 6-core variants, respectively. In terms of performance, the slide provided by Intel showed that the i5-11400H is about on par with the 5900HS, a CPU with 8 cores, and my oh my, that looks very interesting, right? Especially when you look at the 5900HS, again, a CPU with eight cores, and also they were using an RTX 3060 Max-Q GPU versus a normal RTX 3060 on the AMD system, which technically means that the i5 would be able to outperform AMD's chip, but I highly suggest that you're going to take all of those results with a great spoon of salt until official reviews are going to come out from I don't know, Gamers Nexus or your favorite laptop reviewer. And I guess that would be Jared. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Now, for those of you looking for this generation of laptops with their upcoming chips, they're also planning on introducing the Essential lineup starting at 699 US dollars, which kind of makes me think that we are going to start seeing those i5 chips being paired with the RTX 3050 and RTX 3050 Ti, since Intel also mentioned that these laptops will be paired with discrete laptop GPUs. So that's all good news. And if you haven't heard about the RTX 3050 or RTX 3050 Ti, then I will have videos about them right over here. So make sure you're going to check them out to get up to speed on them. By the way, Samsung confirmed them. So yes, we are going to see those um, GPUs sometime later this month, essentially. And of course, with the whole situation going on in the market right now, you probably know that if you want to get yourself these laptops, you might want to be quick uh, because Brandon from Gizmo Slip Tech has made a really good video talking about it. I'm going to have a link to that in the description, as well as a video from uh, Tech Yes City and one from Greg Salazar. All of these videos explain really well what's going on into the market if you're just coming into it right now and you want to get a laptop or a GPU essentially. So this is all going to be something that you guys might be interested in. I won't really go through all of the exact specs if you want to get more of an idea of what you can expect at the moment. And once you dig deeper into the specifications from those slides, I'm going to have links to it in the description. I don't know how many times I said that, but pretty much take a drink for, uh, for every time I said that. Now we're going to stay with Intel, but we're going to go to their desktop CPUs because Igor from Igor's lab, go figure, got a hold of what might be information about an Alder Lake engineering sample. And if you haven't heard about these, then I will also have a refresher for, a refresher for you right away here. 
because chances are you might not have. Now, the good thing about uh, these chips is that they're finally transitioning to 10 nanometers, but they're also going to uh, be using a new uh, design, so big little, and this is where we're going to talk about the 16 core 24 thread processor that should have a base clock of 1.8 gigahertz and a max frequency of 4.6 gigahertz, but that of course is only going to be for up to two big cores. Max frequency is not going to be all that great if you're going to want to see that for the seven to eight cores that they're going to have. That will most likely be around four gigahertz for those big golden cup cores and about three gigahertz all core for the small Grisman's atom cores. And of course, this might not sound like much, but do keep in mind that this is an engineering sample and we're talking also about a new architecture right here. But Intel says that we're expecting to see about a 20% IPC improvement over Tiger Lake. So technically we might be seeing some nice performance numbers once these CPUs are going to launch. But again, take all of this information with a spoon of salt. Um, other than that, we know that these chips are going to have support for PCIe Gen 5 and DDR5, which is going to be great for some of you people out there. And that also includes Thunderbolt 4 and perhaps some other bells and whistles that we don't really know everything about at the moment. So that is going to be it for today's video. I had to reshoot it because apparently my mic was turned the other way around and all of those uh, things that you guys are probably not interested in. But if you have enjoyed this video make sure you're going to like it and here are going to be some other videos that you can watch on the channel so let me know what you think about this whole situation with intel in the comments and i will hopefully see you guys in the next one bye bye